President Biden and the First Lady will jet off to the U.S. Virgin Islands today and ring in the new year at the beach. That sounds fun. Does. He's back in the cocktails. But while Biden takes more time off, he is losing ground to his Republican rivals. The latest Real Clear Politics average of polls show Trump leading by more than two points now in a head to head matchup. Washington Examiner Deputy Editor of Restoring America, Kaylee McGee White, joins us now. Kaylee, good morning to you. So the president resting up before the new year where he's going to be working hard to reverse those poll numbers. What do you think? Is there anything the president can do at this point to make things better for him when it comes to polling? Because things are really solidifying around Donald Trump. Yeah, well, for one, he could try and start campaigning, which he barely has done. And this is the problem with him constantly going on vacation. He spent 40 percent of his presidency thus far on vacation, whether it's at his Delaware Beach House or in California and now in St. Croix, which... Listen, I kind of wish that I was Biden mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> but it, it is a problem because it tells the voters that he's either not fit to handle the duties of the job or worse, that he doesn't even care to try. So this is going to exacerbate concerns about his mental acuity, about his physical fitness moving forward. And again, it would be one thing if he was out there on the campaign trail trying to appeal to voters, if he was in front of the press doing regular press conferences, asking reporters questions. He's not doing any of those things. And at the same time, you have reports from from within the White House itself of aides saying, you know what, we actually try and shield him from the hard day-to-day -day stuff because they're so worried about what happens when he's in front of the cameras. To that point, though, when you look at Trump's lead, how much of it do you think it really is a sort of a desire just to have somebody who's working hard all the time behind the desk, not 40 percent of the time on vacation? Because Americans, you know, let's face it, when you compare us to Europe and other countries, we're a hardworking lot. How much of that lead that you see with Trump is like, I, I, I'm tired of the personality. I know he tweets and X's and does this truth social too much. But, man, I just want a worker in there. Right. I think that's certainly part of it because Biden is not exactly giving them a great alternative. But I think another part of Trump's appeal is that there is this sense of he's being attacked and people are rallying around him as a result. Um, they believe that he's being attacked directly by the Biden administration in some cases. And then, of course, there was the Colorado Supreme Court decision trying Trying to bar him from the state's ballot. There are several other states that are sort of waiting in line to see what happens there. Um, so there's certainly that sort of rebound effect that Trump is experiencing as a direct result. Uh, so there's also the economy. And yesterday I heard one Democratic strategist use the term Trumponomics. Ooh. What are the chances the Biden campaign starts using Trumponomics to try and replace Bidenomics? And will it work? Well, they're not exactly the greatest messengers, so it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, remember, Bidenomics actually started out as a Republican insult, and then the Biden White House decided, oh, let's adopt it. It's like our Brandon. entire Yeah, they, and, <laughs> and so, you know, this sort of bizarre messaging strategy that has clearly backfired to the point where Biden himself avoided using the phrase Bidenomics for more than a month because he realizes that it's so unpopular. Yeah. What does Trumponomics look like? Just everybody has a job and everybody's yeah, making money? Yeah, that's the counter Things to that. Great. It seems like an odd thing to I, like, that's bad, we're going to run <laughs> on that. Yeah, um, you know how politics I want to get your goes. thoughts on this. Uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president. You remember on Thanksgiving, she posted a picture with the gas stove. Well, she's at it again. Another holiday photo in front of a gas stove. There it is. Uh, there's the Christmas one. You can see because we've adorned it with Christmas uh, banners yeah, on the side. Yeah, that's nice. I feel festive and warm right now. Do we have the Thanksgiving one? It looks very similar. Uh, there's Thanksgiving. <laughs> it has and a again, different background. Different banners. Uh, we have the Thanksgiving one. Just to make it clear for the viewer at home, is her team not telling her about this backlash, or does she just not care? I just think that they don't care because, again, this is the whole point of the efforts to ban gas stoves in the first place. They want to deny you what they want for themselves. We saw this during COVID, the hypocritical double, double standards where the leaders were operating by a completely different quality of life than they forced on everyone else. And again, with all of this climate nonsense, which is what the, the ban on gas stoves is a part of, it's about control at the end of the day. They want to be able to control the way that you live your life, whether it's what kind of stove you use, what kind of car you drive, um, what kind of food you eat. So these are that's all a part of it. And I think that she's just flouting it at this point. Someone in the campaign needs to start reading the comment section. Because <laughs> the comments are brutal every time she posts a gas stove picture. It wasn't even her or President Biden who wanted to ban gas stoves. It was somebody else in the administration, and then they vetoed the whole idea. But no gas stove pictures for anybody in the Biden administration moving forward, apparently. Kaylee, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. I appreciate Kaylee. it.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.